السلام علیکم ویورز ویلکم ٹو ورچوئل یونیورسٹی اینڈ یور انگلش لیسن اینڈ دس از یور لاسٹ لیسن آف دا کورس آف دی انگلش کورس نا نوئنگ اے لینگویج مینس دیٹ یو آر ایبل ٹو کمیونیکیٹ یور آئیڈیاز اینڈ اوپینینس ٹو ادرس only then would you be considered competent if you can communicate your ideas and your opinions to others. A foreign learner of any language may know the rules of the language, the linguistic rules of the language that he is learning. And in your case, it is English. But unless the learner, he or she, demonstrates his ability to use this knowledge appropriately, the learner would not be considered fully competent in the language. In today's lesson, you shall learn about language forms and how they are used to perform functions. Now, what is a language function? A language function, to put it very simply, is something you want to do with the language. Now, the, the primary function of language is to give factual information and to convey essential commands, feelings and emotions. Have you ever asked yourself the question, what are people trying to do when they speak? The aims of speaking involve not only broad functions, such as conveying information, expressing information, uh, expressing emotions, keeping in touch socially, and so on and so forth. But it also involves more specific purposes for which language can be used, such as If you hear this utterance, somebody says this, where is the suitcase? Now, what is the purpose of that utterance? The purpose is to get information. Where is the suitcase? That the speaker wants some information about the suitcase. If somebody says, open the window. What is the purpose? The purpose is to make someone do something, and in this case, to open the window. If somebody says, I'll pay you next week, what is the person doing? The person is making a promise. And we are doing these sort of things all day long. Now, how many language functions there are We do not know exactly, but we do know that there are some language functions that are regularly, regularly required for the purposes of normal, uh, everyday communication. Now, there are some very common language functions which speakers of all languages all over the world are doing all the time. Number one is requesting information. When you ask, when you question, sometimes you even request, you inquire, what are you doing? You are asking for information. You are requesting information. Number two, we are passing, we, we are passing on information. We are giving information. We announce, we describe, we tell, we explain, we instruct. Sometimes we summarize things for others. But what are we doing? We are giving information. We are passing on information. Number three, we establish contact. We establish interpersonal relations. And how do we do that? We do that through greetings, by welcoming people. We introduce people. 
we take leave, we bid farewell, we interrupt conversations. Number four, we respond to others' behavior, to others' actions, to statements, to something we've heard. And how do we do that? We apologize, we deny, we disagree, we thank, and we are all the time responding to other people's behavior, their actions, their talk, their statements. And number five, we ex express emotions, we express our inclinations, we express our intentions, fear, happiness, shock. We are expressing all these things all the time. We express fear, we express happiness, we express shock, surprise, we express our likes, our dislikes. I mean, the list can go on and on and on. But here I am just recounting the major ones. For instance, we influence, we not only respond to other people's behavior, their actions, we also influence. We influence other people's behavior, their actions. How? We sometimes blame, we sometimes discourage, we order people, we order others, we warn them. And then we judge, we evaluate. We complain, we compare, we criticize, we disapprove, we praise. Now, all these things are done through language. And to be competent in a language, the learner should know there are many things that are required. It's just not knowledge of uh, <clears throat> the use of the article or the use of uh, the preposition. But it also involves a lot of other things, such as how speakers use the language, the native speakers, how the native speakers of the language, they use the language in ways which cannot be predicted from rules alone. It means that the learner must be aware of the devices, the structures, the forms that are used by native speakers and writers to knit their speech and writing into one comprehensible whole. And this is done by using appropriate forms of the language. Now, when I say form, I mean the structure, the phrases, the sentences, the expressions. For instance, if someone uh, expresses an opinion and you want to disagree with it, the first thought that comes, that will come to your mind is disagree. I don't agree with that, right? The next thing you will do is to decide the language forms or structures that you will show to, that you will use to show your disagreement. That is, in other words, you will decide what grammatical structures, what vocabulary items, and what intonational patterns you are going to use to show your disagreement. And there are a variety of forms, a variety of words to choose and use. A great deal depends on the situation in which the interaction takes place and the person you are speaking to. For instance, if the other person is a good friend, is a good friend of yours, you can just turn around and say, shut up, it's not true, right? But if it happens to be your boss 
or somebody of a higher rank or status or of a, a relationship, you know, if it's your father or your mother, you wouldn't use the same expressions. You wouldn't say, shut up to your father or your mother. But you would use different structures, a different form. You might say, excuse me, excuse me, sir, excuse me, madam, if it's your boss. You may not be quite right over there. You, might, you may not be quite right there. So there are ways, there are devices, there are terms that you can choose from to express your meaning, to convey your feelings. So when you are speaking, so when you speak, who you are speaking to will influence the language you will use. Now, here is an example, a part of, an, uh, of a conversation is provided. You have to see what function is being performed by the language used by the speaker. Now, the, in this example, you will notice that certain words are underlined. I sh we shall have some practice so that you learn to distinguish the different functions. I mean, I, we can't give you enough practice, but uh, a few samples that will be shown you will trigger in your mind the kind of functions that, are, that one uses all the day, all the time. You might not be aware of them, but you are doing it all the time. Supposing there are two persons talking and one says, I think Junaid Jamshed is an awful singer. And the speaker turns around and says, do you? I think he's marvelous. Now, when this other person says, I think he's marvelous, what language function is being carried out? Is the speaker agreeing with the person who said that Junaid Jamshed is an awful singer? Is this person criticizing the singer? Or is this person admiring him? And the words that are underlined, you can see them on the screen before you, I think he's marvelous. Now because the answer is, I think he's marvelous, it means that the speaker admires the singer. So we can say that the speaker is admiring him. Now if the speaker was criticizing Junaid Jamshed, the speaker would have used, would not have used these words of admiration. The words, I think he's marvelous, convey a sense of admiration. Now, we shall have some practice first in identifying or describing functions and second in identifying statements which illustrate the function required. The first part is to identify functions. You will have parts of conversation or sentences given you and you choose from the four alternatives given at the end of the sentences or the end of the conversation and these four alternatives, from these four alternatives you choose the one which best describes the functions of the underlying part of the conversation. Look at the first one. There are two people speaking, Ahmed and Saleh. Ahmed says, come on man, drive a bit faster. And Saleh says, at the rate he's driving, we won't go get to the airport in time, you know. Look at the four alternatives, the alternatives given. One is, do the words that are underlined. 
at the rate he is driving, we won't get to the airport in time. Do those words express fear? Do they express anxiety? Do they express disappointment? Or do they express shock? Now, out of those four alternatives, which one best expresses and it is the alternative B. The words at the rate he's driving, we won't get to the airport in time. It expresses anxiety on the part of the speaker, on the part of Saleh. Let us look at number two. Again, part of a conversation. Aziza says, it was nice of you to invite my mother as well to your party last night. And Bibi, in response, says, not at all. It was nice to have her. What do the underlined words, it was nice of you to invite my mother as well to your party last night. What do those words convey? Do they convey agreement, appreciation, are they showing sympathy or are they giving an invitation? They are expressing appreciation. Aziza is appreci appreciating the fact that her mother had been invited by Bibi to the party the night before. Now, look at number three. Again, a conversation, a, a bit of a conversation between two people. Jane says, mind the vase. And Hina answers, too late. Such a beautiful vase. I hope the situation is clear. What do the underlined words convey? Those words, the underlined words, do they express fear or sympathy or admiration or dismay? It's quite obvious the vase has been broken because the words too late tell you that the vase must have crashed. And then Hina says, such a beautiful vase. And she is not expressing fear or sympathy or admiration, but she is expressing dismay. Dismay at the loss of a beautiful vase. In the same way, look at number four. It's a conversation between father and son. The son says, I don't want to take double maths course. I don't want to take the double maths course. And the father says in answer, I'm afraid you've got to. And it is the father's words that have been underlined. What do those underlined, underlined words convey? Do they show that the father is giving in to the son? Do they show that he's forgiving him? Is he insisting? Or is there an element of fear? When the father says, I'm afraid you've got to, the father is insisting. So, you have identified the function. The function, those words, the underlying words are conveying is the function of insisting. Now, Number five is a statement from a bank. It says, you've been regular in your payment in the past, but we notice from our records, dating from six months ago, that your payment has not been received. Kindly send us your check within seven days without fail. Uh, this could be not from a bank, but from an insurance company. Most probably, uh, some organization where installments are paid. And the underlying words are, kindly send us your check within seven days without fail. What do those underlined words 
convey. You have to identify the function. What do those words, what function do they perform? Are they performing? Those, are they pleading? Are they showing consent? Are they words that one would use to persuade? Or are they giving instructions? And it is number C. Those words are trying to, they've been used to persuade the person to send in his check. Look at number six. I hope you don't mind my saying this, but what you've just said is not exactly true. And the underlying words are, what you've just said is not exactly true. The underlying words, are they showing sympathy? Is the person sympathizing? Is he scolding? Do those words show disagreement? Or do they show surprise? And I'm sure you picked the right one. It is, they show disagreement. Is not exactly true. Look at number seven part of a conversation. Sara says, if you want to increase the literacy rate, you must educate women and girls. And Zara says in answer, I think the same as you. The words, I think the same as you. What function is being served? Do those words convey agreement or are they a compliment? Do those words show rejection or do they persuade? They, I'm sure you had no difficulty in choosing the function and the function is to show agreement. The next one, number eight, a piece of a conversation between two people, Zen and Faraz. Zen says, there's a letter for you on the desk. Faraz, oh yes, so there is. And Zen says, why don't you open it now and see who is it from? And Faraz answers, it can wait. The words that have been underlined in that conversation are, why don't you open it now and see who is it from? Now, do those words show admiration, curiosity, dissatisfaction, or are they words used to give instruction? When he says, why don't you open, open it now, and it's a letter, Zan is showing curiosity, right? Look at number nine, a piece of conversation between a boss and a secretary. The boss says, the typing you've just done for me is hopeless. It's full of mistakes. You'll have to do it again. And the secretary answers, I'm sorry, sir. The words that have been underlined are, the typing you've just done for me is hopeless. It's full of mistakes. Now, those two sentences, what function are they performing? Are they showing regret on the part of uh, the boss? Or is he warning his secretary? Is he criticizing? Or is he demanding something? He's criticizing. He's criticizing, the boss is criticizing his secretary. Right? And number 10, it's, it's a piece of conversation between John and Jane. John says, have you heard the news? The vice principal is getting the sack. And Jane answers, oh, no. Now, the words, oh, no, what do they convey? Do they convey anger, sympathy, disbelief, or regret? It's C, disbelief. Jane can't believe the information that she's heard from John. 
And she says, oh, no. Number 11. Jill says to Pat, how about going to the theater tonight? And in answer, Pat says, sorry, I have work to do. Now, what do the, the words, how about going to the theater tonight? What do they convey? Do they convey a request? Is the speaker requesting? Is the speaker suggesting something? Or is the speaker announcing something? Or welcoming? So it's quite obvious the speaker, Jill, is suggesting to Pat, it's just a suggestion. How about going to the theater tonight? You will look at, you'll have some further practice in identifying functions. You will now have extended conversation and you will find underlying statements or questions and you have to select one response to indicate its function. This is father speaking and he says to his son, Sajid, I don't like your moving around with that friend of yours. Now what do those words, I don't like your moving around with that friend of yours, what function is being indicated? What is the father using those words to convey? Is he using the words to accuse his son, deny something, disapprove or explain? The father is showing disapproval. I don't like your moving around with that friend of yours. Those words are used to convey disapproval on the part of father to his son, Sajid. The next part is Sajid. That is why you will find the whole exercise is extended conversation. It is a conversation between father and son. And Sajid says, why not? Why not? What do those two words convey? Do they convey disagreement? A questioning attitude? Rejection? Or claim? It's quite obvious the son, Sajid, questions, why not? Why doesn't he like his going out with his friend? Number three. And the father says something in response. And the father says, he's a bad influence on you. He's a bad influence on you. What do those words convey? Is the father instructing his son? Is he advising him? Is he commanding him or is he explaining? Simple, he's advising him. He's a bad influence on you. And then the father continues. I've heard he's on drugs. What do those words convey? Do they convey anxiety, condemnation, a warning, or is he explaining something. And those words sound a warning to the son that I've heard he's on drugs. So he's warning him not to move around with his friend. And Sajid in return says, number five, on drugs they convey shock admiration, curiosity, or sympathy. Now, given the situation, they would convey shock, not curiosity, not sympathy, or admiration, but shock. And then Sajid, the conversation is extended, it goes on, he turn, turns round and says, I don't believe it. What do those words, I don't believe it, convey? Do they convey, do they show interest on the part of uh, Sajid? Or, or a sort of a denial? Or is he de uh, denying it or declining something that's been offered him? Or is he showing disbelief? 
quite obvious, it is disbelief. Number seven, the father says, just stay away from him. Just stay away from him. What do those words convey to the son? Are they suggesting something? Is the father ordering his son? Is the father just saying something, just telling him? Or is he threatening his son? So, over there, the father is ordering his son to stay away from his friend. Now we'll have, we'll look at conversation on the telephone. It's between two people, Rafia and her mother. Rafia says, Mama, is that you? This is on the telephone. And mother says, the mother picks the phone and answers, Yes, what is it? You're all right, aren't you? And the words, you're all right, aren't you? What do those words convey? Do they convey a disappointment on the part of the mother? Some surprise? Or is it worry that is being conveyed? Or do they show some interest on the part of the mother? You're all right, aren't you? These are words that convey a sense of worry. The mother is worried about the daughter. Number two. Rafia answers on the phone, I've got some good news to tell you. What do those words convey? Is Rafia describing something? Is she suggesting? Is she confirming? Or is she announcing? She, Rafia is announcing something. When you say, I have something to tell you, we, we do this all day long. We are telling our friends, our parents, our colleagues, I've got something to tell you. What are you doing? What function is being performed? You are announcing something. So over here, Rafia, when she says, I've got some good news to tell you, she is announcing something. And she goes on to say, I won a scholarship to study abroad. What do the words, I won a scholarship to study abroad, convey? Is it a request? Is it some acceptance? Or is it, is she just telling something? Or is she claiming something? It is, it is C. She is telling. She is expanding on the news that she said, she said earlier, she talked about. She is telling. I have won a scholarship to study abroad. The next part. Mother. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm so glad. What do those words convey? Do they convey interest, praise, some preference, or happiness? Simple. The mother has used the word glad, so she is showing happiness. It's the words that you choose to express your feelings, your ideas that convey meaning to the listener. Look at the next one. Now this is not on the telephone. It's, it's a conversation between a manager and his supervisor. The manager says, where should we set up the new mill? The words, where should we set up the new mill? Are they showing anxiety? Is the manager explaining something? Or is he asking? And finally, is he announcing something? Simple. He is just asking his manager. And the supervisor, uh, I'm sorry, he's asking his supervisor's opinion. And the supervisor turns round and says, I would say across the river. I would say across the river. What do those six words convey? 
a, is he suggesting something? Is it a suggestion? Are those words expressing uncertainty? Is he explaining or is he announcing? It's A. The supervisor is suggesting that they set up the new mill across the river. And the manager turns round and says, Are you sure it would be the right place? The manager turns round and asks, Are you sure it would be the right place? Now, you know it is a question. But what is the manager suggesting? Is he suggesting something? Is he doubting? Is he explaining or questioning? It is a question, no doubt. But in the question, there is another element. And there is the element of doubt. The manager has some doubts, some reservations. And he says, are you sure it would be the right, right place? Now, so far you identified the function. Now, you will have responses given you and you have to choose the right, the most appropriate response which would match the function that is given. Again, you will have snatches of conversation. One person will, you will have the words of one speaker. The other speaker's words will not be given you, but you are required, you've been given the function that is being performed, that should be performed, and you choose the appropriate words, the appropriate structure, the appropriate words to match the function. And it is between two people, Zora and Jubin. Zora says, you wanted the telephone number of the girls' hostel. Well, I've managed to get it for you. And in return, Jabin shows gratitude. Now, which words, which responses that you, that are listed over there on the screen before you, which would be the appropriate response showing Gratitude. Should Jabin say, I've already got it? Should she say, that's very kind of you? Or should she say, tell me the number? Or, yes, good. Now to show gratitude, the appropriate response would be, that's very kind of you. Look at the next one. Saira says, I'm leaving college. I'm thinking of taking up a job. And Bina tries to discourage her. The function is discouragement. Which response of the four over there shows discouragement? That's an interesting idea. How foolish. Is it well paid? I wouldn't do that if I were you. And it is D, the last one, the last response. I wouldn't do it if I were you. That shows discouragement. That Bina, these are the words that would be appropriate to show discouragement. Number three. Mina says, would it be possible for you to return the money I lent you? And Sana expresses regrets. Should she say, I'm sorry, not till the end of the month? Should she say, which money? Or would I clean forgot? Would that be appropriate? Or D, sure I will. Now, if you have to express regrets, you'd say, I'm sorry.
Number six. Andy says, there's a vacancy in my factory. Would you be willing to work here? Now, what should Brenda say to show interest? Should she say, I'm well settled over here? Do those words show interest? Or should she say, I'll think over it? Or, can you arrange an interview for me? Or, what's the package being offered? Out of those four responses, which response shows an element of interest? And it has to be C. Can you arrange an interview for me? Because if you're interested in working in that factory, that is what you would say. Can you arrange an interview for me? Number seven. This is a conversation between Aziz and Bina. And Aziz says, I just heard Abida is returning from London tomorrow morning. And Bina expresses surprise. So what should she say? Should she say, yes, that's right. She wrote to me about it. That's not expressing surprise. Or should she say, sorry, what did you say? Or should it be, it's not tomorrow, but the day after. That certainly doesn't show any a surprise. But it's D, the last one. No, I can't believe it. Tomorrow, did you say? Those words express surprise. Number eight, a conversation between a mechanic and a car owner. The mechanic says, I've checked your car, sir. The engine is fine. It doesn't need any repairs. And the car owner expresses relief. Now, should he say, you sure? Thank you. Thank God for that. Or, or should he say, good old car. Now, if he is expressing relief, then it has to be C. Thank God for that. Or thank goodness for that. Number nine. This is an extended conversation between two boys, Saad and Fahad. Saad says, I'm sorry I can't accompany you. And Fahad asks, why? And Saad has to give a reason. What should Saad say? Should he say, why don't you take someone else with you? Should he say, I can if you really want me to? Or would my mother's not well be a reason? Or should it be, it's been very hot like lately. So out of those four, it is C, my mother's not well, that gives a reason. Right? And look at the last one. It's a statement. Illiteracy is a serious problem in our country. Somebody makes this statement. And continues to ask if someone else agrees with this statement. Would the speaker say, you understand my point? Would he say, what's your opinion? Or would he say, have you been told this before? Or should he say, wouldn't you say so? Out of those four, if you want to ask if someone else agrees with the point just made, the point that has been made over there is, illiteracy is a serious problem in our country. And to ask if someone else agrees with that point, you would say, wouldn't you say so? Now, that was a practice in identifying functions and in identifying responses. Responses appropriate to the function. 
And with that, we come to the end of the lesson. And this was the last lesson of your course. Now, before uh, I wind up, wind up, I would like to talk about the final exam. Uh, I would like to tell you uh, what it will consist of. Now, your final exam will consist of all that we have covered in our lessons. For any surprises, just depend on your common sense and background knowledge that you have, any background knowledge that you have of English. Please go over the lessons and focus on the following. Focus on reading comprehension. You will have a passage to read and comprehend and your comprehension will be tested. Then there, there is vocabulary. You will have a question on vocabulary. You might have a question on um, finding out the main idea, the supporting ideas. You might have something like locate the topic sentence of the paragraph. You could have something on the different organization patterns of essays. You could have a question on what is the, the function of an introduction, the body and the conclusion in an essay. And you could have something on continuity and transition devices. What devices, what signals show continuity and transition between sentences and between paragraphs. And your final exam will consist of all that we have covered in our lessons. Please do work hard and remember it is 40% of your total assessment for the course. You could email us if you have any difficulties when you are revising your lessons. I hope and pray that you do well in your final exam. Best of luck. Allah Hafiz.